Das ist tausender. At this point, the officers have initiated an investigatory detainment, and Mr. Fendler surrenders his identification without question or protest. The legality of wearing a helmet inside Walmart is irrelevant. The real issue at hand is whether the officers have reasonable suspicion to believe that Mr. Fendler is trespassing, and given that the manager who called 911 said that they had asked Mr. Fendler to leave several times, it is likely that the officers would be within their authority to detain and investigate him. As with many states, citizens in Arizona are required to state their name if a police officer suspects them of committing a crime under Arizona Revised Statute 13-2412, and Mr. Fendler would have been required to state his name if he hadn't peacefully well, surrendered his Markham. ID. Everything seems so good so far. It is important to note that Mr. Fendler is detained because this is when his Fourth Amendment protections come into play. The Supreme Court has dedicated many rulings to developing a legal framework that distinguishes between lawful and unlawful arrests. And over the years, the precedent has become more formalized and developed. In the 1968 case of Terry versus Ohio, the Supreme Court noted that, quote, not all personal intercourse between policemen and citizens involves seizures of persons. And that, quote, only when the officer, by means of physical force or show of authority, has in some way restrain the liberty of a citizen, may we conclude that a seizure has occurred. In the decades between the Terry ruling and the 1991 case of Florida versus Bostick, the reasonable suspicion standard underwent many changes and eventually evolved into a reasonable perception approach. In the Bostick case, the court held that the appropriate inquiry to determine whether a citizen has been seized is, quote, whether a reasonable person would feel free to decline the officer's requests or otherwise terminate the encounter. Given that Mr. Fendler was surrounded by officers and was ordered to present his his identification and remove his helmet, it is likely that a court would consider him detained and entitled. To me, so far, this seems pretty reasonable. I think both sides are pretty decent, except the cop was a little bit annoying, but I think it seems good so far. Protection. Yeah, what's the point of showing a proof of purchase? Can, can't you browse? Whether he browsed a store or didn't browse or bought or didn't bought something, does that really fucking matter?
So did you see the manager basically walk up right to your face and ask you to take off your helmet? How would no. you not see that? I, I saw him talking, but he's got a headset I'm on. I'm standing so. right next to you. Right next to you. I came up and I said, sir, I, I thought you were you going this way. I didn't hear I you. I said, stop. I followed you halfway throughout the store. I have discussed the efficacy of eyewitness testimony in a previous episode, which I will link in the info card above, so I won't spend too much time on it in this episode. But... It should be noted that witnesses can be extremely unreliable, and the manager's recollection of events is a testament to that. First, the manager claims that he walked right up to Mr. Fendler and implied that Mr. Fendler intentionally ignored him. As you can see from the surveillance footage, the manager makes a subtle gesture at Mr. Fendler, but remains outside of his field of view for the majority of the encounter. It is easy to see how Mr. Fendler may have been unaware that the manager was trying to speak to him, considering that he was wearing headphones and his view was restricted by the helmet. Next, the manager claims that he followed Mr. Fendler halfway through the store telling him to stop, but once again the cameras show that this statement is inaccurate. Although the manager did follow Mr. Fendler across the store, he approached Mr. Fendler from behind the second time and gave up after being ignored again. The manager implied that there was no way Mr. Fendler could have missed him, even with the headphones on, but the camera footage shows that it is entirely possible that Mr. Fendler was unaware of the manager's presence. Without questioning any other witnesses, reviewing any security footage, or getting Mr. Fendler I think at this point, chat, guys, I wonder what's that you guys on. I I think there's a really good chance if the guy is doing his thing and listening to music, whatever, there's a good chance he didn't see any of this shit. And when the guy was up front, yeah. On their side of the story, the officers began their questioning by assuming the manager He's was fine. being truthful. The officers also allowed the manager to interrogate Mr. Fendler in the midst of their investigation, which only added to the escalation of the interaction. Mr. Fendler continues to answer questions, and for a moment, it seems as though he may get the opportunity to explain himself. Let me, a let me ask you something. What's the, what's the purpose of keeping the helmet on? It's just faster to get to work, man. Like I said, I'm on my way to work. Where do you work at? Work at Jim Click, right okay. there. Okay. So you walk through the store, what'd you buy? I bought... Sandwich, a Gatorade, two peaches, a scrubber, I think four pens, a toothbrush. Okay. That's it. So you just Basically kept everything on here. That's it. I couldn't so find you, a basket. You keep the helmet on, you walk around, yeah, I do that grab all this safe stuff. Way, I go to the other safe way, I go. Well, okay, this officer's gotta be slow, something like that. Yeah, man, you go to the store, grab all this stuff. Yeah, a shopper that's shopping. Yeah. So you, you basket, keep the so helmet on, you walk around, yeah, do that grab all this stuff. Way, you grab all this stuff, but like, 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 it's like it's a weird thing to do. Like, dude, what are you doing? Do, grabbing stuff at a store. It's, it's, I mean, he knows I know because I, I ride, he, he rides. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't take much effort to take it off, put it back on. I mean, it takes maybe like five seconds, ten seconds it if that. It doesn't, man, but I've never had any issues where uh -huh. it was like, take it off or, or a sign saying that you need to have it off. And like I said, That's why the manager way. asked you to take it off. I, like I said, I didn't hear him. I had music playing throughout okay. the street. You didn't see him standing right in front of you. I saw you there, and then I saw you talk. But, uh, like, again, you have a headset on. so well, I, I can't put my hands on you to get your attention. I, I, I was standing oh, yeah, right next to you. Right? I didn't. Just like I'm standing here with the officer. I didn't come next to me. I stood right I in front of you. Just like I'm standing here, I said, I need you to stop and listen to me. You oh, totally right, ignored me and kept walking. Sir. I got I associates playing, that man. were upset and concerned because you're walking around with a backpack with a helmet. Nobody knows who you are. Yeah, but I made a purchase. I'm concerned about the safety of my associates. Now, okay? You're an argumentative person, and I am not the person you want to argue with. You need to take your hand, and you need to go like this and pull your head out of your okay? Because you're walking around in a store hiding your face. There's shooters that go on all over the place. This man comes up to you, and you want to play. you got a little Senna headpiece going on that you can okay. stop. You need to listen to learn, not listen to reply. You need to turn that little switch off in your brain that you want to run your mouth and argue every time. So this guy needs to not clock in for a couple of shifts. Maybe maybe go to the fucking water park or something like that. Have some fun holes or some shit. Then... Oh my god. You can go to jail Jesus to work. Christ, so this guy, you man. Make, <laughs> you gonna quit walking around businesses with a helmet on, scaring a lot of people to where you got massive cops all over the place, rifles outside waiting for a shooter to come out? Laugh. Yeah. But that's where we're at. So pull your head out of your and quit arguing every time somebody tells you something. I'm just trying I'm to telling you, look at what part. you're doing. You keep wanting to argue with me. I'm not the guy you want to argue with. Well, I'm trying to argue. I'm just That's trying why to you keep talking. Point. Stop talking. Okay, fine. 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 This is Officer John George, and his emotional out- Guys, his tangent would really make sense if it was kind of reasonable, but this this, 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 this almost feels like a, a fucking- a fucking- 
transparent. Make an example. Yeah, people die doing this or whatever when they talk about playing hide and seek without wearing a helmet on or some shit. This is Officer okay, John example, George. Yeah, you get the point. His though. emotional outburst did nothing to progress the investigative oh, intent of Mr. Fennell's detainment. In fact, it hindered the officer's ability to build a complete contextual narrative around the accusations being put forth by the manager. Not only was Officer George's reprimand unprofessional and uncalled for, but it also violated Mr. Fennell's First Amendment right to free speech. In the 1987 case of Houston versus Hill, the Supreme Court held that citizens have a right to voice their opinions to or near police officers, whether or not they are in the performance of their duties. Mr. Fendler was detained when Officer George ordered him to stop talking, which essentially amounts to a government official depriving a citizen of free speech. There are also implications of Fourth Amendment violations associated with Officer George's conduct as well. In the 1983 Supreme Court case of Florida versus Royer, the court recognized that, quote, the scope of the detention must be carefully tailored to its underlying justification, and that, quote, the investigative methods employed should be the least intrusive means reasonably available to verify or dispel the the officer's suspicion in a short period of time. Officer George's behavior served no investigative interest, and Mr. Fendler was forced to listen to and obey the officer because he was being detained. Although unlikely, it is possible that a court could find that Officer George violated Mr. Fendler's Fourth Amendment rights by extending the length of the stop to lecture him and force him to be- I don't like cops think like lectures are, are good. Lectures are dude. What a Why? dog chimney down. Many episodes you of ATA have featured the interactions where officers extend the duration of a detention to lecture the suspect. And although the Supreme Court has not directly ruled on the constitutionality of this conduct, prior cases indicate that it could arguably be viewed as a Fourth Amendment violation. Whether or not it was a violation of rights, Officer George's tantrum was completely unprofessional and uncalled for. Once Officer George calms down, the manager and the officers continue to question Mr. Fendler, but he decides to remain silent. Do you, do you have, do you have his info? Um, I was gonna see if you want to trespass. Yeah, I, I, I do want to trespass, I don't want to back to the store. Okay, so what? officially being trespassed from the store, don't come back to Walmart, come back to Walmart, manager, anyone sees you, you get arrested for that. Yes, we don't have a picture of him with a helmet. Well, you when he walks right. out, it'll be on the camera that's, when he walks out. What's your telephone number? Uh, do I have to provide that, sir? Yes, you do. Keep in mind, if you come in here again, Jeez, I mean. you'll be arrested and you'll book. You book for trespassing. Okay. And understand, what he's telling you, you're trespassing from Walmart, it's a national system. You're not just trespassing from this Walmart, it's you're Walmart. trespassing from all Walmarts and Sam's Clubs. Okay? Huh? So understand that. If something happens and you get pulled over or stopped in one of them other ones for wearing your helmet for stupid stunts like that, you'll find yourself sitting in town. It didn't have to be like that. But how many other people you see going to business walking around with a motorcycle helmet on? Especially with the shootings in Daytona and freaking um, El Paso just happening. Your goal is People to are going to be on edge. They're going to be scared. They're going to be worried, okay? You got someone that walks in wearing a motorcycle helmet and has a backpack with military camouflage. They're going to think otherwise. They're not going to think it's just some law by says. You can see how that looks? It's like common. Take a helmet off it's kind of like common sense. I mean, like I said, he rides, I ride. I always take my helmet off. I mean, what does it really save you that much time? Today, it didn't. Are you on medication? How old are you? Health issues or anything? How old are you? Tell me how old you are. Tell me how old you are. Okay, you're acting like a little child. <coughs> how many times did you ask him to leave? At least five. Like, like he's ignoring you. I walk, I walk half the store with him, following him right to his side to ask him. After I told so many times that, you, that officers were coming out, and he just kept walking. I'm thinking about it, especially the way he's acting. He asked him five, six times to leave, following him around the store. I would say so. I'd say we missed the threshold. Why not? So, huh? Especially the current behavior. You asked him about all the needs of the store? Five or six times. Walk right next to him, just like we're walking right now. Mr. Fendler was arrested, charged with disorderly conduct, and taken to the Pima County Adult Detention Center, where he was detained for 17 hours. Following the guys, guys, for somebody for somebody to be deemed um, warned for trespassing, did they have to like acknowledge that they have, that they've been warned or whatever? What if what if I go to a store, some guy follows me and says, 
Get out of the store, 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 get out of the store. And I, you go up against this. I let this guy leave the store 10 times. 10 times! And he's still here. Come arrest him. I mean, am I, am I GG? 17 hours. Following the encounter, Mr. Fendler's charges were dismissed, and he went on to file a lawsuit claiming that he was illegally searched, falsely arrested, maliciously prosecuted, and publicly defamed by the department. According to the Green Valley News, as of September 1st, 2020, both the town of Sawarita and the Sawarita Police Department deny any wrongdoing and have moved to dismiss the lawsuit. A judge has yet to rule on the dismissal, and Mr. Fendler's lawsuit is still ongoing. Overall, the Sawarita officers get F. An F. For neglecting to conduct a thorough and legitimate investigation, remaining hostile and condescending throughout. And also, the problem was fixed. Why escalate to an arrest? What's the point of doing that? If the problem is resolved and it's not going to happen again, what the fuck is the problem? The interaction and escalating what could have been a trespass warning into an arrest for disorderly conduct. The officers utterly failed to conduct an investigation into what actually took place and essentially arrested Mr. Fendler for being quiet after being told to do so. That being said, the societal context of Mr. Fendler's actions cannot be ignored. And although the Walmart managers may have overreacted, their fears were somewhat justified. This interaction took place just days after the El Paso Walmart shooting that claimed the lives of 23 individuals and injured 23 more. So it is somewhat understandable why they would feel uneasy. However, okay. that does not excuse the managers lying or the conduct of the officers. Condescending lectures are not part of the mission of a police stop. And there is a legitimate argument to be made that officers who extend the length of stops to scold or conversate with suspects are violating their Fourth Amendment rights. At the end of the day, this entire happenstance was the result of a miscommunication, and no one's livelihood was threatened by Mr. Fendler's actions. But instead of acting as neutral arbitrators on behalf of the public, the Sour Rita officers chose to exaggerate the gravity of wearing a helmet inside a store and effectuate a baseless arrest. Nothing that the officers did made their community a safer place, and the fact that the charges were dropped demonstrates that they're act. I think the guy gets an A, not an A plus, but the guy who goes, he gets an A. Mr. Fendler gets a B plus. Hey, because come on. He could have exercised his right to remain silent more tactfully. He remained calm and compliant throughout the interaction, made a legitimate attempt to establish a productive dialogue, and followed up this encounter with the proper legal action. Mr. Fendler was outnumbered from the start, and there likely wasn't much that he could say or do to avoid being arrested, especially considering that he wasn't saying anything when the officers decided to arrest him. Mr. Fendler made a genuine effort to dispel the officer's suspicions, but once Officer George finished his condescending tirade, Mr. Fendler shut down, and rightfully so. While Mr. Fendler did eventually decide to remain silent, he neglected to verbally acknowledge that he was invoking his Fifth Amendment right, and the moment he chose to begin his silence could have been more calculated. I commend Mr. Fendler for his ability to maintain his composure throughout now, this encounter. So this seems kind of pity, this seems kind of pity, but, um, I'm gonna cop say, at this time, you have the right to remain silent, right? What if your reply is to remain silent? How is that a problem? You have to state I'm now silent, you have to go from a sense to another. And for following up with the proper legal action. It will be interesting to see the outcome of Mr. Fendler's lawsuit, but it may be some time before a conclusion to this encounter is reached. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content. No, but you should. Okay, makes sense, yeah. Also, what you guys saying is that he gets B plus because he should have said it instead of just doing it. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you.